well, as you can hear, the game's on. <laughs> I had to refresh this stream. The frames were dropping. And it was weird. And I don't like it when, dropped, when drops frames. Uh, so yeah. Hopefully it won't happen. If it does happen, I'll have to check on my internet and stuff. Which might be there might very well be the reason why i'm dropping all the frames considering that it's super windy today in any case how is everyone's how is everyone doing today i am stressed i am stressed Woo! stressed but as most of you know that's a normal thing for me so I hope that you guys are better than I am doing and that you don't get pimples because of the heat, especially in the crevices of your arms, like I do. <laughs> it sucks. Um, yeah, what else? What else can I really say about today before we start anything? Nothing much, apparently. I've been given a couple of things to think about in terms of my 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 streaming layout and stuff. So I'm gonna maybe maybe <laughs> as I as I hit the, as I hit everything around uh, maybe um, changing a couple of things around here and there. Oh my god! I know what that says, <laughs> and I'm afraid. <laughs> Of even saying that, <laughs> cause I don't know who Salvatierra is. <laughs> In any case, let's let's get let's get started with the game. We haven't played this in a week, and we got to very exciting, spoopy places. So let's go for it, spoopies. Yeah, let's go for it. Are you not gonna work? Okay. Let's unplug it. Plug it back in. Here we go. Ah, now it's working. Yeah! I'm gonna have to keep checking the... the frames over here just to make sure that I don't drop anything. Anyway... Last stream, I think we did everything here, and we did this one here, a successful getaway. So now we have this two to make, to do. So, hmm. I, handsome boys or cute girls that I, that are illegal. Handsome boys, so let's go with them. Let's read the summary since it's been a while since we played in their storyline. Hajime Yoshimi's death, Nejima's threat of mass murder, the problems just pile up, putting the detective's goal of collecting all the curse stones in jeopardy. Tutsumi leaves Edio to handle the investigation while he catches a quick break. Yay! Let's go for it. Tetsuo Tutsumi. It's 9 a.m., meaning um, all the curse bearers are probably laying low now. Sorry for the wait, boss, but I managed to gather some information. Took you long enough. Forensics has finished their investigation and the body has been carried away. That said, we're still closing the park to the public, at least for the time being. This place was really giving, giving me the creeps last night, but it looks pretty normal now with the sun out. Okay, let's... let's. He's been, been up all night gathering information. Must be nice to be young and have that kind of energy, but I'm glad I had to have him on my side. It gave me a chance to rest up. Nice! Rest is literally the best thing. Well, we've got our we've got ourselves quite the mess. Strange deaths popping up all over the place that may or may not have something to do with the curses. 
You also need to keep looking into Yoshimi ne and Nejima. For now, we'd better start following up on the few leads we've got. Guess I'd better see what Edio's find out found out. Edio, tell me your information. Things at the station were pretty hectic, but I managed to get some info. Let me fill you in. Thanks, the floor is yours. A total of three mysterious deaths were confirmed in that in the area, including the one in this park. Three. So... Uh... The dude that, that we played as in the first part, or first chapter, I guess. And two more. So let's start with that one. The young man we found here. Yeah, well, tell me about the young man. And let me give you the floor, motorcycle. Ugh. He's been identified as Shogo Okie, 25 years old. Regular old office worker who worked around here. He died of asphyxiation due to water in the lungs. He drowned. He drowned? In the middle of the park? That's not possible. It's gotta be a curse we're dealing with here. About that, boss. Isn't this park associated with one of the seven mysteries, too? Uh, yeah, the Whispering Canal. That's right, the Whispering Canal. It does seem like there'd be a link between canal and the death by drowning, don't you think? Don't ya? Sharp thinking, Edio. We're starting to get hang of this. So let's assume they're related. What's next? Before that, the body of a woman was found behind a residential complex in Kamezawa. The victim has been identified as Tawako Hayashi, 29 years old. She was an office worker who lived on her own in the area. Okay, interesting. As for the cause of death, well... Yes? The entirety of her body was crushed by some kind of strong eternal, external force. Eternal force, yes. External force. No murder weapon was discovered in the area, but considering the way she was found, we're looking for something large, flat, and heavy that could have crushed her in one fell swoop. Hang on, are you saying... She was stepped on? The foot washing mansion. Exactly, crushing the foot washing mansion's modus operandi. The place the body was discovered is also known to be related to the seven mysteries. Then is this Namigaki's doing? Shit, I knew he'd used it. Judging by the amount of soul drugs, the victim was just a regular person, not a curse bearer. Guess we should report this to the paranormal affairs. Got it. And the, for the third victim. He was identified as Kohei Junuchi, 32, a teacher at Komagara High. He was found in the school courtyard. Huh. Cause of death appears to be external trauma from fall or heavy blow. The impact crushed his arms and legs. Since he was found in the middle of the courtyard, he couldn't have fallen from the gymnasium or the main building. A teacher dying at school. And not just any school. Komagara House is one of the seven mysteries. Uh, Komagara. I don't remember. Uh, files. Seven mysteries. Uh, this Whispering Canal, Fool's Procession, Fool's Procession! Woo! That's right, we're, it's where the Fool's Procession is supposed to be. It's too big of a coincidence. We can't rule out the possibility that this death, death was also the work of the curse. I see. Either way, it seems all three victims can be tied to the Seven Mysteries. There's probably a curse bearer at the center of it all, pulling the strings. But you got a point. All these strange deaths do point in one direction. That's right, Hajime's case wasn't all that different either. He also died of mysterious causes in place connected to the Seven Mysteries. Problem is that the timing doesn't match up. He died before the curses were activated. Did he though? Did he? 
Hmm. He, could he have been hit by a different curse? One that didn't have anything to do with the seven mysteries. Hmm, that's a thought, but if that were the case, we'd be dealing with a powerful practitioner. One who could pull off a curse like that without using a curse stone. There aren't many people in this day and age who could do something like that. Oh, really? I see. I don't, really, I don't know too much about that stuff. I'd be surprised if you did. Guess I better... Uh, fine, I guess we'll talk to him more. Well, looking at this death, it seems like many of the curse bearers acted last night. But we can't rule out that there were more killings from which the bodies haven't been found. Yikes, I hadn't thought of that. But there's one silver lining. Judging by my own curse stone, it seems that the curses can be activated while the sun is out. Oh, that's great news. So basically we're safe during the daytime? Hello, I am doing okay. I'm hoping to get spooked by this video game. Exactly. It's also like what likely why Nejima gave us till dusk. Ah, you must know the curse stones couldn't be used during the day. Either way, we got till nightfall to settle this. It's time we flushed out the curse stone bearers. Aye aye, boss. Let's do this. The curse bearers. At the moment, we only know the identity of four curse bearers, you included. Yutaro no Migaki had the food washing mansion, and Hideki Araishi had the ever burning lantern. We've got both of their curse stones. And then there's Nejima, who claims he has the one sided reed. Yeah, that about sums it up. Uh, Yako Sasaki? Oh my god, I forgot this. Okay. So, this are the ones we have. We don't know who has the Whispering Canal, the Beginning of Light, or the Taiko Tsugaru. Okay. Okay. We'd better figure out who the remaining five are quick. How should we go about looking for them? There's no point in searching blindly without a lead. Let's focus on other things for now. Tracking down Nejima may lead us to the other curse bearers too. Either way, he should be our top priority. He could do some real damage if we don't get him. Also, I also want to look a little more into Yoshimi. I've got a feeling there's some connect uh, connection there. Aye aye boss. Sounds like we got our work cut out for us. Hajime Yoshimi. Who was Hajime Yoshimi? Hajime Yoshimi. He was the community safety officer. And who's the other? Fumicha Fum <laughs> I forgot his name. It starts with an F. Fumichi Kanejima, the man with the headlines over two decades ago. Okay, with the Nejima murders. I asked around to meet us community safety bureau where Yoshimi was stationed. It seems like he was investigating the apparent suicide girl of a girl named Michio Shiraishi. Ah, yeah. I heard about that. He was trying to determine whether it really was suicide, looking into the height of the building, the force of the impact, her wounds, all that. He must have suspected some kind of foul play, because he ordered a full investigation. But it had already been deemed a suicide, and his superiors told him not to go steering things up. Huh, what was the evidence? Well, according to the report I found on his desk last night, the body was found at the foot of a building, ways away from the road. There's no, there was no evidence of vehicular collision, so it was ruled a suicide. But, but he thought there was more to it. Yes, a truck or other flat-faced vehicle traveling at high speeds could inflict similar damage. In other words, sometimes a traffic accident can look an awful lot like a fall. Interesting. Interesting. So there's a chance that it wasn't a suicide. 
but what a terrible way to go. There were no brake marks on the road, meaning it would have been a hit and run. The vehicle would have hit her without slowing down at all. This is turning quite the grisly case. Yes, spoopiness! But the vehicle couldn't have come out from a collision like, Hello, we are wanting for spoopiness, but I don't think we're gonna get it. It's so sad to, to want for spoopy and not get spoopy, you know? Uh, exactly. So I asked the traffic bureau to keep an eye out for any vehicles with frontal damage. But I haven't heard back from them yet. I don't think they're looking very hard. So we've got no proof. That said, if it was a traffic accident rather than a suicide, it's possible that someone silenced Yoshimi because he was on the verge of discovering the truth. That's true. You think the driver is the one who did him in? Not quite. Yoshimi had already talked to Francis and the traffic bureau, right? His death wouldn't have covered things up. You're right on that. Even if the suicide was a cover-up for a hit-and-run, it doesn't seem like enough reason to kill a cop. Gives her a boop and then runs away giggling. No! Hi! <laughs> we are wanting to be spooked tonight. I don't know if we're gonna be spooked. But we have been spooked by this game, so I'm just gonna do something. There we go. Um. I got too comfy and I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> oh no! I got comfy in my chair and I forgot what I was doing! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Uh, doesn't seem like enough reason to kill a cup. Oh, okay, because it was a uh, cover-up. Right. <laughs> but it's also sad to get spoopy when you don't want to. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I understand not wanting to get spoopy. But it's, it's, it's like, this is the reason. The spoopiness is the reason why I really want to play this game. I need my spoopiness. <laughs> I was going to play a spoopy game. And then I got gifted this game by Square Enix. And now I... I need to play the spoopiness. I need more spoopiness. That's right. Onion. <laughs> Hi, Kenny. Thank you for the raid. Thank you for the raid. Thank you, thank you for the raid. How was your stream? Let's see. I cannot... I don't know how... To get, uh, <laughs> I was playing Logan of Zelda Uno, but it was too hard, so I'm playing Link to the Past tomorrow. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's actually something that I've been told a lot. That you you can just skip Legend of Zelda one. <laughs> Because it's too hard. Zelda 1 is frustrating. Hmm. Try Zelda 2. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Zelda 2, no. <laughs> hmm. Ah. <laughs> the two on Ness is, or the two on Ness are skippable? Okay. <laughs> oh, that's right. Unrelated, but I got something else, too. I managed to get hold of Michio Shiraishi's address. Yoshime went there a bunch over the curse of his investigation. Might be a good idea for us to drop by, too. Adventure of Link. The Adventure of Link is worse, apparently. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the raid. It has been a pleasure to have you around. Also, I know how streaming is very taxing on your body. So, Kenny, if you want to go get food or something, um, you can go get food. We don't mind. On the other hand, are you ready for some spooky? Maybe this game will spook us. Though it's morning, so I don't think it'll spook us. It's morning. 
Sad face. And by morning, I mean it is 7.30 p.m. my time. You ate before stream? Nice. I haven't eaten and I'm getting a little bit hungry and I have been streaming for only 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, I commit mistakes all the time. It's fine. It's fine. Um, anyway, Yoshimi went there a bunch over the curse of his investigation. Might be a good idea for us to drop by, too. Good thinking. Hopefully, that'll give us some more leads. All right, let's move on to the next topic. We're thinking. Uh, but thinking doesn't do anything. Oh, okay, we have already... I thought the surroundings changed, but no. Uh, remember the girl y Yoshimi met with uh, the day he died? When he told me Okuda? Community safety didn't have any contact information for her on hand. Not even an address? Well, they had her parents' information, but when I called, they said they hadn't heard from her in a month. Ooh. Lots of family issues from the sound of it. And they even said they didn't want anything to do with her anymore. Oh boy. That said, she still goes to school once in a while, so we might be able to find her there. Not sure we really have time for a stakeout right now. But she could be a key witness. Can't we have community safety track her down for us? We can ask, but it might be tricky to get, it, to get it done today. For starters, Komagata High School is close today. Ah. Because of that teacher that died? That's right. Alright, but if it's not something we can do today, maybe we have to forget about it. Let's move on then. I'm moving on. <laughs> I got some information about Yoshimi's fiance from the community safety. Her name is Mayu Chosawa, uh, 27 years old. She works as a beautician in the area. Look, I even managed to get a picture of her. She sure is a beauty! Oh, we didn't get to see the picture. Oh boy, here it comes. What? Community safety hasn't been able to contact her. Uh, of my model? Thank you! Thank you! I even have a nose. Can I see my nose? Look at my nose. I even have a nose. <laughs> Not by phone or at her house. In other words, no response. Dead. Silence. There it is. Can't things just be easy for once? Oh, she's actually pretty! Yeah, she is pretty! My is a petition and the fiancé of Yosh uh, Hajime Yoshimi, a police officer with the Sumida Police Department. My use current whereabouts remain unknown. It defini it's definitely starting to look suspect. Truly really advanced model with a nose and everything, right? I still cannot cry though. Crying is a little bit out of my emotional reach. So, but I can get spooped. Can get spooped. It's very spoopy. <laughs> I can also get very happy. And I can get very scared. Well, surprised. And I can get sad. I can get angry. I can get happy. And default I have emotions <laughs> uh, a crime of passion perhaps who needs crying sometimes in some games you need to cry <laughs> hmm it is fairly common for people to be killed by a lover or a spouse but Yoshimi was well liked and they'd been together for over 10 years you never know. Things could be different behind closed doors. Ton ton ton. I guess so. But we'll have to consider the opposite scenario too. It could be that the same person who was out for Yoshimi is after his fiance as well. Oh, Steven Seagal? Oh! Yeah, you know what? I can see it. I can, I can see it. She could be in danger. You're right. Either way, she's important to the case. HQ already has people looking for her. We'll know as soon as she's found. Oh, I hope she is found. I want to talk to her. And now for the murderer. HQ has mobilized a, a search unit for Najima. But so far we haven't received any word. 
Guessing he wasn't at home or at work. About that, apparently he vacated his last known address a week ago. Dun dun dun! You serious? So you have no idea where he lives? It gets worse. I checked in with the factory he was working at. They told me he was only there for a month before he quit. How did you say that? Okay, so first of all, my la my first language is not English, and I have a little bit of an accent in certain words. So, which word? Vacated? Vacated? I mean, that's how I say it, vacated. <laughs> Left? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no. Oh, no. How do you say the word? <laughs> oh, no. Vacated. Oh, vacated. Oh, vacated. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Vacated. <laughs> what is English? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Vacated. Jesus Christ. English is bullshit. Yeah, thank you. Because of that, I want to take a sip of water now. Ugh. <sighs> So, here's the thing. My first language is Spanish. Hola. <laughs> I'm just going hola. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Spanish, so I'm not gonna talk in Spanish. What is speech, to be honest? Yes! Preach! <laughs> Vacated. Oh my god. I am ashamed of myself. <laughs> um... My first language is Spanish, and I actually live in a Spanish-speaking country. It's just that I work for an English-speaking company, and I speak English most of my life. Because I went to an English school that every class was in English. So, <laughs> I know a little bit of English. <laughs> but some words, some words I don't know how to pronounce, and people are like, Hmm, Fury, that's not how you pronounce those words. I know kindergarten some were Spanish without being able to form sentences. Mm. Je peux parler en français, mais le... Je ne le pratique pas. J'ai arrêté de pratiquer depuis de 12 ans. And that's all I can say. And that's more. <laughs> and that's more <laughs> than... <laughs> I would never question how to pronounce a word. I have an actual problem with a couple of words in English. The biggest one is iron. I have to, like, when I say it, I have to think about it. So I, you know, just pause slightly and then say it. But if you catch me on the spot, I might actually just say it iron. Because, like, to me, it's iron and irony, so it's pronounced the same way, even though there are two different words that have nothing to do with each other. Super califragilistic, espialidocious. Aunque al oír decirlo, suena enredoso. Oh, fuck, I forgot the rest of the song. And I know it in Spanish and not in English. Fuck. Oh, el parle français. Que direz-vous de ça? Uh, je peux parler un peu en français, mais comme... Et comme je dis, je ne le pratique pas. Donc, je ne... <laughs> je ne... Remember? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Let's remember! Let's remember in French! <laughs> remember in French. Souv souvre. <laughs> Souvenir. Oh my god, how do you, how do you, <laughs> how do you con conjugate? Rappel. Rappel, not a souvenir. Rappel. Rappelé. Uh, je ne rappelle pas beaucoup de mots et de conjugation. And the conjugation. Anyway. 
Languages. God, this is way <laughs> You're a blast. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I haven't been playing the game for like the past minute. So, no, I'm just glad people like being here. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, I think I am going to change a little bit of my layout and like, you know, act like actualize a couple of things here and there. Kind of ironic, you can't remember the word for remember. Ah, it's been, tw holy fuck, it's been 12 years. <laughs> it's been 12 years since I graduated high school and that was the last time I learned any French. <laughs> See, and this is why I need a crying face. This is why I need a crying face, this, this precise moment. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> so very much, Bill, for the follow. I hope you have fun around here. Um, for your free, you're a baby, <laughs> a baby. <laughs> so making me feel old. Hey, they started it. Well, not really. I started it, but whatever. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Back to the video game. He was only there for a month before he quit. <laughs> You're already having a great time, I'm glad. I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Hold on a second. You're telling me nobody caught that? Well, I had the same thought, so I spoke to his probation officer. Turns out he'd be doing house visits and interviews, but never bothered checking on his workplace. Tan tan tan. He also said he lost track of Nejima, when he moved to a new place. I just arrived, what did you miss? Um, people are dead. Uh, we are talking about languages and we are old. Also, I really, really like, I forgot the world has ended. Oh my God, the world ended. <laughs> um, also, I'm thinking about maybe rebranding the stream a little bit more to more like a cozy place instead of just this pop-up of color. <laughs> um, we also learned that I speak French a little bit, but Bill Man Jones apparently speaks more French than I do, which is fantastic because my brain melts sometimes. <laughs> and that I cannot say the word vacate. I say it vacate, but it's vacate instead of vacate. Because like in my brain, I see the word vacate and I read the word vaca and I'm like all right yeah Vac vacation instead of vacation vacation vaca instead of cow <laughs> oh my god languages are dumb vacuum no well you see vacuum it's not vacuum vacuum is not a word it's vacuum it's vacuum <laughs> with an a ah for apple <laughs> with a hispanic a ah <laughs> Back. <laughs> You're not confusing me, Kenny. <laughs> I hear vacay and I think vacations. You see, I say vacations and not vacations. And no one has ever corrected me. Apparently, that may be wrong. <sighs> I should I should take English lessons again. I don't know how to speak the language anymore. So sad. So, so sad. Anyway, back to the video game where everyone has died. Mm -hmm. He also said he'd lost track of Nejima when he moved to a new place. Jeez, that's just sloppy. <laughs> vocation is also a word. Well, but vocation is pronounced very similar as vocacion. So that one is very, like, I mean, it's almost spelled the same. It's just... You know, we should communicate telepathically. Oh my god. I need to read you. I None of you will understand except Odos. None of you will understand except Odos. But I'm going to read you a quote from a book I'm currently reading. Where is it? Where is it? Where is the quote? Where is the quote? I am your salvation. I am your deliverance. <laughs> so 
so everything that you know is like everything th oh my god the book that i'm reading is sh teaching me that everything that i've known is a lie because there was th there was this character which i was feeling compassion towards and then i learned who they were because it's a prequel and i and i'm like the <laughs> But I cannot really talk about it much because uh, my partner hasn't read the book because I bought it for his birthday, but he's reading The Wheel of Time, so I'm reading it first. Mm -hmm. He's about to become a conspiracy theorist. Look! Look! Hear me out! Anastasia Romanov is dead. The one that could have been alive, though was Maria Romanov. But we don't know. <laughs> the Titanic didn't sink. It was the Olympia. <laughs> That's quite the chore. Uh, yeah. He he recently read The Hobbit and he's like, oh, I'll just read uh, Lord of the Rings. And he tried reading the beginning of Lord of the Rings and was like, <laughs> nope. And he noped out. 9-11 uh, <laughs> was never hit. Uh, well, you see, 9-11 was never hit, but you mean the Twin Towers, and no, the Twin Towers weren't hit either. It was just... <laughs> and her daughter, Natasha Romanoff, became the oh, Black Widow. <laughs> I know! My favorite conspiracy theory that is not a conspiracy theory is that the U.S. government has a cave full of cheese. <laughs> That they're doing nothing with. <laughs> it's fucking wild to me. It's wild to me that the US government has a surplus of cheese and has it in a fucking cave and they're doing nothing with it. <laughs> ah. Oh, yeah, I do believe in Mars, but they're very good chocolates as far as I've heard. So why not, you know, chocolate? Oh my god. Free the cheese. <laughs> and what's another one that's very good that I really like? M&M's are fake. No! Not the M&M's! <laughs> uh, what other one? Um, I really like reading a lot into uh, how JFK wasn't shot. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe in chocolate? Well, boy, let me tell you, Costa Rican chocolate, so good. So good. So good. So good. <laughs> oh, and the JFK one. <laughs> About Mars, Barack Obama, or JFK? I have to preface this. I do believe JFK was killed. I do think that Barack Obama is human. The moon landing is real. 9-11 is real. All of them is real. With the exception of uh, the cave of cheese being fake. Because that one is also real. <laughs> uh, oh my god. <laughs> You know what? It's really funny because, like, I was thinking mm, conspiracy theories. No president has ever existed. Oh no! I'm going. <clears throat> you know what? Okay, I took a, a sip of water and I'm here to tell you something. I actually. And hear me out. I actually. I'm not a VTuber. You can find pictures of me on the internet. You can find my face! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Imagine that! <laughs> How could I? I know, right? I am not virtual at all. I live in the actual world. <laughs> oh, this is 
is so funny though. I should continue playing the game, but this is so funny. <laughs> I am not an anime girl. Mm -mm. I am a short Costa Rican girl that pretends to be an anime girl that has a nose. I have a nose. Look at my nose. Mm. <laughs> that explains why you look different in person. <laughs> I'm a booTuber. <laughs> Everything they're giving parole tonight if, about anyone these days because they're running out of the room in prison. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I want to say it. It's so bad, and I really like the song because I'm the target audience. But I want—I don't want to say it to make other people suffer. This is so sad. Play the spacito. <laughs> I like the song. <laughs> That reminds me, earlier today I was watching a reel and um... And just for those of you that don't know Spanish In Spanish we only have one uh, accent per word <laughs> And this reel was like There's only... <laughs> there's only... There, uh, Spanish only has one accent per word except for one word Which is Provocame From Chayanne And I had to listen to the song <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the reels that I find are so stupid. <laughs> Otis can attest, he is the co he was a co-worker of mine. He knows that my reels are literally a stupid class. <laughs> They're like stupid class. <laughs> anyway. I've heard that they're giving people parole just about anyone these days because they're running out of room in the prisons. Mm. <laughs> no Latino can hear provocamento, nothing else. I know, right? Also, you didn't put a tilde on it. I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> They've never played in this game. <laughs> oh no, but I want to know what happens. Oh no. <laughs> <sighs> oh no! <laughs> also, if you know other VTubers, I really like how Gura, Guar Gura, says Oh no! <laughs> it's so adorable! <sighs> okay, okay, okay. Going back to the, the running out of room, <laughs> it isn't real, it's. <laughs> That re oh my god. I was watching every new sentence will crash a car like a princess. Is oh no, not Princess D! Not Lady D! It's just. This is just really funny because, like, I was watching Car Captor Sakura yesterday. I didn't ha I apparently didn't want to watch Car Captor Sakura today. What the fuck is wrong with me? Uh, Lady D <laughs> wouldn't die in a car crash. <laughs> I'm like, Princess Diana, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the funny thing is, I was watching The Crown. The <laughs> I Am I the car crash? <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I have been derailed so much. Oh no! I've been derailed. <laughs> I can't. I can't read sentences. Anyway, I was watching Car Captor Sakura, and it was this episode in which she was trying to capture silence, and and she just made Keto become a dubbing <laughs> become a ventriloquist plushie and it was so funny and I don't know why I remember th th that when you said that I Ed is not real and that <laughs> just pretending to be a dude <sighs> and I've been reading of the blood <laughs> no <laughs> fine fine we'll go back to the game <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! Go back to the game, okay? Which also means there aren't enough probation officers to go around. This is probably overworked. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh no, it's Carpy! Look at that cute Carpy! <laughs> oh boy, 
way I need water. <laughs> We're playing a game somehow. I was gonna mention Final Fantasy and then I completely forgot what I was gonna mention about Final Fantasy. But yeah. <laughs> Which also, uh, okay, yeah. So Nejima got to fuck about unsupervised. God damn it! <clears throat> that asshole is annoyingly good at faking remorse or insanity, whatever the situation calls for. <laughs> there sure are a lot of them. Final Fantasy? Yes. <laughs> Um, last year we played through Final Fantasy 7 for the first time. The VODs are on my YouTube channel, which is Secret Fairy. If you want to watch them, it, it's, it's hilarious though. <laughs> it's so stupid. Back when I was arrested, well, back when I was arrested, I cannot read. I think I just quit. Let's just, let's just have a Satsu. Uh, the original. I... I don't have the remake on PC yet. I think I'm gonna wait for it to be completed and then play the remake. That will be fun though. That would be like a billion hours long though. <laughs> Back when I arrested him all those years ago, just talking to him left a bad taste in my mouth. He's probably hiding on a false name, which will make it hard to track him down. It's never been completed. <laughs> it's never been completed. Uh fair enough i mean it is squaring an exit it's kind of the best <laughs> oh taking a, the puppy out pet the puppy unless you're talking about something gross and meaning taking the dog out then <clears throat> ara, ara. <laughs> People to Squeenix, you keep using the word final. I don't think it means what you think it means. I mean, considering that Squeenix is a Japanese company, do they really know what finaru means? It was not a euphemism. We will all be there and they just have to run Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, pretty much. <sighs> He's probably hiding under a false name, which will make it hard to track him down. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having so much fun with this and I've not even played the game. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Screen Enix names games, whatever they want. Uh, yes, there is Final Fantasy 13. Final Fantasy 13 2 and uh, L Lightning Returns. I was gonna say Vanilla, but I think Vanille is another character in Final Fantasy. I have only played three of them, so please be mindful. <sighs> please be mindful. He's <laughs> probably hiding under Fell's name, which will make it hard to track him down. That explains what he so brazenly made contact. That asshole. Three! Yes, three! I've played Final Fantasy 1, I've played Final Fantasy 7, and I've played Final Fantasy 10 mostly. <laughs> I do plan on playing more Final Fantasy games. I think we are getting to one of the Final Fantasy games this year. I just don't know which one yet. <laughs> there's so many and they're so good. And also with the Pixel remasters coming out. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. And that asshole, he's mocking us. <clears throat> well, for now, the paperwork is to circulate his name and mugshot is being filed. That's gonna take way too long. We only have until dusk. Play six? I know, I've heard six is so good. <laughs> you keep Cecil from me? Well, no, not Cecil. <laughs> Speaking of Nejima, yeah? Did you manage to reach your daughter? It'd be best to put her into protective custody as soon as possible. Not yet, I can't reach her. They called, but she's not picking up. Wasn't home when they went to the house either. <laughs> That's not good. What does that, does that mean she never came home? And why aren't you the one trying to reach her? Shut up, I don't have her contact info, all right? Damn, she really doesn't trust you, huh? Either way, I told her mother that it was an emergency and that we'd send an officer to find her and get her to safety. 
she was really reluctant but i got her to agree <laughs> i love the pouty face that this that these people have <laughs> it's just so cute that pouty face is so funny <laughs> Guess that explains why you got divorced. What is even happening? Okay. Uh, let's let's see the story chart. Oh no! No, I don't want to return to the story chart then. Um We are in this area of Japan called Honjo. And there are seven curses. There's actually more than seven curses, but there's seven curses. And uh, those curses are used to kill people. The first story that we had going on was from Shogo Kie, who was in search of some uh, curse stones to revive this girl that he was flirting with, uh, that got killed by a curse, and we don't know. Uh, and on one of the storylines, he gets killed at the very end, but he kills a lot of other people. And in the other side of the storyline, he never knows that the curses are real, and he gets killed. <clears throat> and that is our introduction to the game. Then we have three other storylines. Um, the storyline of uh, Harue Shigima, which is a mom who lost his son, and now is trying to bring him back to life. Uh, Tetsuo Tatsumi, which is who are, we are like playing us right now. And uh, Yako Sak uh, Sakasaki, which is another holder of the curse, who is trying to figure out how Michio Shiraishi uh, actually died because she knew that he that she didn't commit suicide. And, Mi and Mio Kurosusu um, is helping Yako figure it out. Uh, Mio apparently also is a contact for the police of um, paranormal affairs. Uh, so yeah, there's there's a lot of things going on, and I want to be spooked, but we get we keep getting distracted by funny stuff. <laughs> but if you if you her former father former he hasn't died can find her. How the hell did Najima do it? Former. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. I <laughs> nice. I like it when they <laughs> gonna be. Yes, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> You're gonna be always very honest. <laughs> that cuts deep. Yikes. Sorry. It just kind of slipped out. Anyway, I suspect you said curse and I like that. <laughs> well, you see, there's a curse and 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 a curse. If you like spoopy visual novels, I for now highly recommend it. I think it's a great game. I suspect it has something to do with his curse echo. Back on topic already, huh? He said his curse could kill a lot of people in a short time. It may even allow him to act from a distance. I see. The one-sided read? What was that story about again? Something about a man stalking a woman who goes insane and chops her up. Ah, uh, right. The one more gruesome of the seven mysteries. As for Nejima's whereabouts, all we can do is throw more people at it till we find something. I'll check in with, H uh, with high quality frequently to see if they've got any updates. And that's about it. Oh yes, the good music returns! I want them to put this song on Spotify. <laughs> it's very much like Death Note. Yeah, kinda. Just good, because Death Note's not good. <laughs> Death Note's full of arrogant people. <laughs> but we have very good music now. We could go to Komagata High School to look at, into Hitomi Okuda, or to Michio Shiraishi's house to find out more about her. Oh no, the music's gone. Okay, uh, so basically, Shogo Kie died. Uh, she, he is helping her find Curse Echo, a, a Curse Stone. Uh, they find it, he dies. 
or he kills people he as she dies he kills people and then dies she lost her son he uh, found the murderer and she lost her best friend to an apparent suicide um but let's just go to fancy sushi I don't know if our friendship can recover after that, but you are right about the arrogant people. Well, you see, if our friendship cannot recover, was it really a good friendship? Was it really a good friendship? That's what I'm saying. And also, who else will you nerd out about Ark of Scythe with? Because Danny and I can continue nerding out about it. I have friends outside of our friend group, outside of Audible, that can nerd out about it. So, do you really want to lose our friendship? <laughs> Knife to the throat. Do you really want to lose our friendship? Anyway. I have no time to waste. With that in mind, Tutsumi Erio and Erio dire <laughs> direct their investigation towards Komagara High School and Shiraishi residence. The sun. <laughs> I'm sorry, this song is such a pop. I love it. Okay, so should we go to Michio uh, Shiraishi's neighborhood? Or should we go to Komagara High School? Where they've been a murderer. There was a murder in Komagara High School. Oh no. But this is the neighborhood of a murdered girl. Or suicide girl. Hmm. Murder or suicide? <laughs> well, it so happens. No. No. Hmm. Hmm. The teen marine de do pingue. Cuca macarati tres fue. Yo no fui. Fue tete. Pega, pega. Ella fue. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I just did that. <laughs> I don't know the one in English. I was gonna use the one in English and my brain's like, you only know the Spanish one. Near Shiraishi household. It seems like Michio's house is at the end of this road. We don't want to intimidate them, so maybe I should go alone. The houses are really crammed together in this narrow alleyways. Strangers like us walking through definitely stand out. It really feels like old Tokyo. It's quiet. This place is normally pretty lively, full of people coming and going. There is one in English, yeah! I just don't know what it is. <laughs> but it seems like everyone's decided to stay inside because of the recent incidents. Okay. Eddie's checking the Shiraishi house at the end of the road. The street really narrow. The street's really narrow. So two big guys like us would stick out like a pair of sore, th or sore thumbs. Oh, but it's the same thing. Then why did you why do you say also look at the butt? Let's think. So the Shiraishi household. There is a chance that Michio didn't actually kill herself. It might be for the best that we didn't find her parents. Okay. Uh, okay, I guess the Shiraishi household. All right, I'll go check the house. Ton ton ton. Eddie's off checking the Shiraishi household. I'll just wait till he gets back. Uh, still the same thing. Now let's think. Oh, it's a sticker! It's Mockingbird number six!
Oh, you're back. No lock bus. There is what in English? How do you kill it? Uh, there is what like... Oh my god, I don't know what to call it. It's like when you're choosing someone to be it. Here in Spanish, we do Tin Marín de Lopingüe. Uh, <laughs> in English, I've heard something, but I don't know what it is. I don't... It's, it's a silly song kids use to choose who goes first. I mean, I guess tag, but... Uh, I don't know, because tag is a game. Tagging, mm, maybe. But there's a song, it's like... Between us, you know, that person gets tagged and goes first. And it's it first. The song, the song! Yeah, I, I just don't know what the song is in English. <laughs> Like ring around the no because ring 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 around the roses is a death song about how the monarchy will fall. <laughs> Am I thinking the same thing? No, I'm thinking another one. I'm, I'm I'm thinking of another one. Oh no, I'm confusing songs. No one home. Doesn't look like it. I knocked for a while, but nobody came to the door. I glanced in the window, and, but there was no sign of activity inside either. And I saw about three newspapers stuffed into their, ma uh, their mailbox. Oh, the ring around the roses is about the Black Death. The, the, the one that I'm thinking is London's Bridge. Okay, thank you. I knew that they were both dead, I just didn't know which one it was. <laughs> hmm. Eddie looks kind of disappointed. Oh, guy, yeah. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. That's all I know about it. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Na, 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 na. And then something about losing a toe. How much we can do if they're not home? Let's go somewhere else for now. Great, do you think Ronda Ronda is the Spanish descent of Ring Around the... Uh, catch a tiger by the toe. It wasn't to lose a toe. If it hollers, let it go. Mm. Looks like no one's home. Let's try again later. Okay. Ronda. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, childhood songs that I don't remember anything apart from the one about the rice. Which I forgot. Which I forgot how it goes at the beginning. Here we are. Komagata. Hi. Oh, zapatito cochinito. This is zapatito cochinito. O sea. But it's not arroz con leche. Arroz con leche. Me quiero casar con una señorita de la ciudad. Que sepa coser, que sepa jugar, que sepa lavar los platos. No, que sepa coser, que sepa lavar, que sepa limpiar los platos para ir a jugar. <laughs> oh my god, that is such a misogynistic song. <laughs> <sighs> I know nothing about the rice one, which I don't remember. I know about it! It's just that I don't remember if it's arroz con leche. Because it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. Oh my god, childhood songs, you know, like... <laughs> very fucked up songs, very misogynistic songs. Classes are suspended for the day, so the students are just kind of wandering around aimlessly. This place isn't only connected to the case because of the students under the Yoshimi, under were under Yoshimi's jur jurisdiction. I cannot speak. <clears throat> it's also the site of the fool's procession, and of course, where that teacher was killed. Seems like a likely place to find some clues, don't you think? Hmm. Is there something on my shirt? Don't tell me I stink. Ideally, we could talk to someone who was involved in the incident. Easier said than done, though. Oh, right. Speaking of schools. What is it? You said paranormal affairs can't help us right now? So why don't we get that psychic high schooler you mentioned to help us? A lot of people get involved in this case lead uh, back to the school anyway, so it might make things easier to have them with us. For a guy who questioned me on the legality of working with them, you sure seem eager to exploit underage labor. 
Hey, who said anything about exploiting them? I just want to give our young experts the opportunity to shine. When you become such a smooth talker. Anyway, I'm afraid I don't know where they are. Oh, I see. Wonder if there's anyone who could help us scout the area. Ooh, we can suspend. We should all exploit it. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfectly reasonable time for students to be at school. And yet, that this will be that simple. What do kids do? Nothing, that's what. Oh my god. <laughs> Komagata High School's gymnasium also serves as a polling place and evacuation center. A lot of the buildings around here are still made of wood, but this place looks safe and sturdy. The news of the dead teacher has also attracted a fair share of rubber uh, rubberneckers. The atmosphere is kind of tense with this many cops around. Okay, Minecraft is one of the most popular games of all times. It quite literally shows that kids yearn for the mines. True, true. I wonder if there's any. Oh, okay. So you're just saying that gymnasium, school gates. The school gate will stay locked while forensics inspect the scene of the incident. Looks like they're still busy. Let's talk to the person in charge later. Yoshimi also looked out for these students as a Sumida city officer. Juvenile delinquency has been gro a growing problem for years now. The school is no exception. Ooh, what do we know? Oh, we also have the Mockingbirds one. The midpoint of, Showa, of the Showa era saw a marked increase in delinquency among young people. A wave of violent incidents targeting teachers as well as students, and often involving weapons, consumed the nation's middle and high schools. Bozozoku, a Bozozoku motorcycle gangs also enjoyed their heyday around this time. Japanese arrest rates reached historical peak during this period, and pompadour Yankees and female sukeban delinquents became common sight on the streets. This youth rebellion is often framed as a reaction to universal education policy with the pressure for highly competitive entrance exams, but, it causes, but its causes are likely many, manifold, extending far beyond the deficiencies of the education system. And these are the burbs we have. We have four of the 20 burbs. Um. Yeah, I also wonder, but I don't see any anyone we can talk to apart from you. Also, uh, this is Japan in the 80s, if I am not wrong. This song is fantastic. Let's see if they're back. Looks like they're not home still. Oh, you know what this means? I know what this means. <laughs> this means that we have to play another area. Kids are dying, we grooving? We're always grooving here though. Yeah, we are gonna suspend. You cannot currently progress any further. And once your situation has changed, select resume to try again. Press and suspend will return you to the story chart. So now, we cannot do anything more here. But, hear me out. We can continue this one with this very funky dude. Or this one. And I think, personally, that we're gonna go with this one. Bringing her friend back from the dead means she'll have to pay the price. 
Yako makes it home safely, but still isn't sure about how to proceed with her curse. She worries about Mio as the night passes. What time is it? 8 a.m. Yako Sakasaki. Oh, she's fine! She's fine. Oh, good morning, Yako. Huh? Yako, rise and shine. Uh -uh. Huh? You're up. Huh? It's morning? Um, I... Are you okay? Can you remember your name? Uh, duh. I'm... Yes, I am the specter of the spirit board. No, no, don't fall back asleep. You must still be dreaming. Wake up! Yes, I'm Yako Sakasaki. Good. Oh, Mio, thanks for last night. Was everything okay? Yeah, still alive. Couldn't dispel the curse echo or learn the identity of who used it, but I managed to at least get away. But in that situation, it's best that you can hope for. I'm sorry I got you involved in something so dangerous. I meant to look for you as soon as the sun rose, but I was just so sleepy. I can't even remember when I fell asleep. It's okay, it's only natural to be exhausted after what you went through. Besides, I also feel bad that you've been wrapped up in all of this. It's supposed to be my job to prevent that from happening. Oh yeah, you said something about that last night. Just, who are you exactly, Mew? Oh, well, um... Okay, thank you for stopping by. We'll be streaming tomorrow at 7 p.m. Mountain Time again. More of this game. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, well, um, the truth is, I've been trained in things having to do with the supernatural. Huh? You mean you can learn that kind of stuff like you would with flower arrangement? I had quite the eventual, chi the eventual childhood. Huh. That sounds like it must have been tough. Yes, it would take a long time to explain. So let's leave it at that for now. As fate would have it, I ended up as the apprentice, or maybe more like an assistant, to a notable paranormal expert. Schools have always had more paranormal disturbances because young people tend to be more susceptible to these things. I'm sent to schools that may experience something paranormal to and put a stop to it before it, before it happens. Wow, that's amazing! So it's like a part-time job you do while also being a student? Well, I do help maintain public order, but it's all part of my training, so I don't get any money. Oh, you cut it rough then. But still, that really is amazing. You're so cool when you face off against the evil spirit. I never know if I should be happy when you compliment me like that. But anyways, that's why it's up to me to resolve any paranormal issues at school. And why I'm going to look into the cause of all of this. But for now, let's head to school. Yeah. Oh, do you have your curse stone? Now that it's daytime and its power is diminished, maybe I should be should I be able to I should be able to hold it. Want to give it a try? Right, I do have it, but Yako? Is it really so wrong? Trying to bring Michio back, I mean? I can't approve of it. The right may seem like a dream come true, but if it involves taking the lives of other people then Yeah, true. I want to make sure this whole ritual ends without anyone getting hurt. That's what I believe, and that's what I'll put before anything else. Mm. I'm sorry, but is it okay if I hold on to it? Yako. I promise I wouldn't use I won't use it, no matter what. But maybe there's some other way. I just have this feeling that I shouldn't give up on the possibility just yet. That said, I'll help you, even if it's to stop the curses. For Michio, that still exists within me, I'll settle things so that we can move forward. 
Hmm. Also, I really like Mew. She reminds me of me in high school. Okay, but if you ever feel in danger, you can give me the curse stone at any point. Right. Thank you, Mio. Okay, then let's go. Ooh. Candy Shop Senoya. An old-fashioned candy shop located on a street corner in Honjo. It has been in Yako Sasaki's family for three generations. On the weekends, you can spot Yako watching over the store cooking mon monya uh, monyajaki and playing traditional tops tops and card games with the local children. Though traditional candy shops are known for selling cheap treats for kids, it is not uncommon to see this largely privately owned businesses become something more like general stores, selling food, drinks, utensils, and other daily necessities. Many families operate candy shops on the dirt on the dirt ground floor of their home, known as a doma, with space in the back where the customers can eat monjaki, monjayaki as well as arcade games and capsule toy machines in the front. Such facilities make them attractive places for children to gather and play. However, the harsh reality is that traditional candy shops, which thrive during the period of high economic growth, when many confectionery manufacturers enter the market, are, experiences, are experiencing a steady decline due to the rise in convenience stores and changes in children's tastes and interests. Interesting. Komagata High School front gates. Huh? I thought it it unusually noisy. There's a big group of people and a police in front of the of the school. Did something happen? If the police are here, then something must have. I'll go ask. Thanks. Oh boy, the police are here. Yeah? No, I said that if we want to go watch the two movies, we can't have food truck. Okay, I guess we'll just continue. This isn't good. Huh? What happened? Um, don't panic, okay? The first teacher who came to work this morning found something. Uh, okay. Mr. Junochi was found dead in the middle of the school grounds. W what? They're closing the school for today. But that's not all. I didn't know this either since I didn't watch the morning news, but rumors are spreading that a number of bodies were found nearby. What? There is no way! Why? Could it be? Because of the curse? We don't know enough to say. From what I heard, Mr. Junucci's body was in the middle of the grounds. But his body was covered in bruises, like he'd fallen from somewhere high. Weird. Taking into account his unnatural death and the timing, it's very likely it has something to do with the curse. We're saying someone used their curse on him? Last night? Seems like it, doesn't it? But that's so scary! Yeesh. So the curses really do kill people? And someone used it! Shh, keep your voice down, okay? What would happen if another curse bearer heard you? Eep, sorry. Go, hey, Junuchi. Ah, uh, there's another one. There, oh, Hideki. Yeah, this is the local history researcher. Go, hey, Junuchi is the second, the school year homeroom teacher. English teacher. 
He was seen alone with Hitomi Okuda in a classroom late at night. His body was deceased in this in the school grounds. I wish we had a little more information, but they've locked up the front gate. Maybe we could sneak in through the back entrance? Hmm? That person over there. Isn't that Hitomi Okuda? You're right. That's unusual. But she was at the school last night, too. She must know something about Mr. Junochi. Let's see what she has to say. Oh, Mio! Wait for me! Huh. So you're telling me the two of you were the ones at, at the school last night? No sense hiding it then. Plus, I owe you one meal. I'll tell you everything I know. Thank you. She owes you? Um, yeah. Right after I transferred her here, there was a bit of trouble. She gave me one of those... What was it? Oh, exorcisms. Oh, you know, casually. She, just, she gave me an exorcism. Huh, so that's what it was. Did you hear about Mr. Junochi? Heard about it? I've known about it since last night. I saw that asshole bite it at the school grounds myself. What? You saw it happen? Tell us about it. What happened exactly? Don't really know myself. It was pitch black? What I can tell you... It was almost dawn, probably around 3. He started freaking out all of a sudden, ran out onto the ground like something was chasing him, then screamed. Ah, somebody help me! Forgive me, Michio! Ooh, Or something like that while he was running around. M Michio? He mentioned Michio? Was there anyone else out on the ground? It was too dark to see from where I was. But if we're but for just a second I think I saw a girl in a school uniform with her hair in braids. Oh. I didn't go out to make sure, so it could have been nothing for all I know. Then I heard him begging for his life, like, I was wrong and I'll do anything. Then all of a sudden his arms and legs snapped, even though he was just standing there. His arms and legs broke without him, without anything being done to him? He fell over and quit moving, so I thought I better get out of there. I mean, to be honest, that is actually the best thing that he could have done. Then he croaked. That's all I saw. I see. But, but from what you've told us, it almost sounds like Michio's ghost chased down Mr. Jonochi and killed him. Hell if I know anything about that. I'm just telling you what I heard about him say. Did you tell that story to the police? Nope, and I ain't gonna. Can't count on them for shit. Not like they'd believe such an insane story anyways. Right. But there must be at least one person in the police worth trusting, right? I, yeah, I guess. There was this one cop who always got in my case about stuff. But he died just the other day. Oh, he did? I'm sorry to hear that. Everyone who gets involved with me ends up dead. Maybe I really am cursed. Pisses me off. You've got it all wrong. The spirit that possessed you wasn't that kind of spirit. Huh? It wasn't? Yeah. This was just an unfortunate coincidence. Though I'm sure it was hard enough for you. Let's hear more about her exorcism. Hey, Tommy, were you possessed by some kind of evil spirit? I don't understand it all too well myself. What I can say for sure is... 
thanks to Mio, the weird symptoms that were happening to me all went away. Yep, some people aren't born with natural sensitivity to the paranormal. They tend to end up isolated as they struggle to relate to the, to the people around them. They also tend to draw spirits to them naturally. This can cause strange symptoms they don't understand like headaches, muscle stiffness, and hallucinations. Even memory problems. I'm sure it must have been very hard. So that's how it works, huh? Do people also have their personality taken over when possessed too? Hmm. It is possible with spirits who have very close relationship to their target. Like a sibling, a parent, or in a child. But you almost never hear about people being taken over completely. That it's when the two parties aren't in sync that those negative effects can start to appear. So the seances or whatever you see on TV are all bogus? <laughs> Not quite. There are mediums and diviners who can align their minds with the spirits they call. Though there are people on TV who are just putting out on a performance. Huh. There are people who in life had extremely powerful spirit sense or a deep connection with the person. But even they shouldn't be able to completely take over the person they possess. And even if they could, it'd only be enough to pressure them to choose certain behaviors that wouldn't be unusual for them to do on their own to begin with. Hmm, but if that's the case, wouldn't you not know if you were choosing that behavior of your own will or not? Hence why there's a lot of cases where people don't even realize they're possessed. So the spirit may influence that behavior and memories of the host, the deeper their connection in life, the easier it is for that to occur. I see. Getting possessed by a spirit is pretty complicated, huh? That information must be very important to us. I need to stretch a bit. <laughs> there we go. Okay. It must have been tough for you being possessed for so long, he told me. Hm. <laughs> Whatever happened to me doesn't make any difference. Me being able to see spirits and stuff has nothing to do with how things ended up like this. Yeah, it's not like being able to see them is your fault either. The same goes for me. Maybe it's just something we have to live with. I think you have a knack for it yourself, Yako. I bet you can see them too with a little training. Ugh, I think I may pass. He told me last night before you witnessed Mr. Junochi collapse. Can I ask you can I ask what he and you were doing in the classroom? You gonna tell the cops? Oh, right. With everything that happened with Mr. Janucci, they'll suspect you if we told them we saw you with him that night. Anytime something happens that someone like me, with someone like me, all those shitty adults start jumping to conclusions. I understand. I won't tell them. You wouldn't have been able to kill him anyway. Ooh, veteran investigator! Heck yeah! Oh, you don't see the... I, I, got, I got a little pop-up. That's the little achievement that says that I'm a veteran investigator. <laughs> Precious me is a veteran investigator. Maybe I should play the Phoenix Wright games. Maybe. If you say so, then I don't mind telling you about it. So last night... That piece of shit Junochi called me over, over here, acting like he was gonna attack me or something. What? How terrible. Whatever, I'm glad he's dead. He had it coming. Calling people worthless and a cancer in society when he doesn't know shit about them. The, that asshole was the one who always, uh, the one, was the one always acting like a scum if you ask me. Is that so? Could you tell us in more detail why he called you out in the middle of the night? Hmm, it's hard to explain where to start. Oh. 
What did you mean by Mr. Junichi's acting like a scum? Was he doing something bad? You know Michio Shiraishi, right? The girl who killed herself? Huh? Michio? I do know everything, but that creep of a teacher had some dirt on her. And he was using it to blackmail her, blackmail her. Oh my god, no. Call her up after school and make her do whatever he wanted. What? What? What do you mean you say whatever he wanted? Oh my god, I'm grossed out. I'm grossed out. I leave it to your imagination. Nothing that a couple model students like you would ever get involved in. No way. That's... How? What do you mean by dirt? I don't know anything about this. How could I not have known about this? Yako, I know you. how you feel. I tried to calm down. You got guts acting like you were her friend. Do you know she really did a number on both Michio's body and soul? She probably felt she couldn't tell anyone like she had to suffer alone. No, how terrible. He told me? How do you know about this? I just happened to walk in on it. Oh no, <laughs> that's so gross. I know the spots around school people go to when they want to stay out of sight. He ran off in panic when I yelled at him asking what he was doing. Walked in on it? I couldn't just leave her alone, looking like she was about to cry so I stuck around for a bit. She told me everything that happened in whispers. She probably figured I wasn't the type to spread that stuff around. She never asked for my help. She told me she was fine and to keep it a secret. M Michio, why? She probably thought she just had to grit her teeth till it was through. She was naive. I tried to tell her that if you g give guys like that an inch, they'll take a mile. Oh my god, this is so gross. She kept saying about how it was her punishment. She was soft. No. Of course, Junochi didn't change. He kept on doing what he was doing. I don't understand either of them, but that was as much as I was involved. And then she killed herself. Nothing I can do about it now. He told me, if you knew about it, then why didn't you? Trying to say it's my fault? She told me not to say anything. She told me she was fine. So what the hell more responsibility do I have other than what I already did? Yako, there's no point blaming Hitomi. Michio, why? Uh, let's hear more about Junichi's death. Oh, that's all you know about that asshole's death? Hey Mio, I've been thinking of something. Hmm? The way she described it reminded me of something. The way Mr. Junochi died sounds a lot like how Michio died. Of course, I didn't see it myself, but the state Michio's body was in, it was like she had fallen from high, from high up. Could they have been killed by the same curse? I don't think so. The curses of the seven mysteries had not manifested when she died. And if we can trust what the spirit board said, then Michio died in an accident. Oh, right. What you described does sound like Michio killed Mr. Janucci. She did have a reason to hate him after all. No way, you mean like, you mean that really was her ghost? Like for real? Those who die bearing strong resentment or regret can occasionally become spirits, either bound to place or roam freely. However, it'd usually be impossible for them to kill the living. Most don't have that kind of power. But it's possible they could possess someone close to them to act in those lingering regrets. Huh, I wonder if that's what happened. Alright then, supposing what the spirit board said is true and Michio's death was an accident, then she must have had some regrets. If she really hadn't given up on living, that is. I don't think she was the kind of girl who would just give up no matter what the situation. I don't really know, but she didn't seem like she had something tormenting her so much that she'd killed herself. Hmm? <gasps> 
So that's why you do the job you do, huh, Mio? I thought she was a weirdo when she showed up all of a sudden saying she was gonna exercise me. If you hadn't said anything, I probably would have knocked your lights out. You tried to perform an exorcism on her without telling her anything? Uh, you see, in my experience, most people don't understand no matter how much I explain. They only accept my explanation after they see the results. Huh, I guess that makes sense. It's hard to explain where to start. Oh. Did you hear what the dirt was? Nope, never heard what it was. But for the, from the sound of it, he'd been blackmailing her since about a year ago. For that long? That dick probably caught her doing something she shouldn't have been. She looked well behaved, but there's more to a person than meets the eye, you know? There must be some reason. Duna, got nothing to do with me. So last night, how did it start? Ah, right. Remember that nosy cop I mentioned who was always on my case? He died at the former Yasuda Gardens a couple days ago. Yoshimi was his name. He was part of the juvenile division. He didn't look like a cop at all. Real rough guy, but good at looking out for folks. So he was the only one I could talk to. Huh, so there was someone like that with the police. Too bad he ended up dying. Oh, another thing. One time he suddenly introduced his fiance to me. It was hilarious seeing a big guy like that act all shy, like a shy little kid all of a sudden. Oh no, this game! It's pulling my heartstrings! No! She told me that she was like me when she was my age, and that she was on my side. Must have been terrible loss for her, too. Yeah, I'd feel a little bad for her when I think about how sad she must be. And I... I saw him at the gardens the night he died. Oh no. Oh boy. I don't like this game anymore. I mean, I love it, but I don't like it. Whenever I get worked up over something, Yoshimi always took me straight to that park. And he'd listen to whatever it was I was pissed off about. That day, he called me over there like usual. But something seemed off about him. Like he was worried about something? Worried about something? Yeah, he asked me for a favor, too. That was pretty unusual. A favor? What kind of favor? He handed me a weird talisman and asked me to hold on onto it for him. A talisman? Yeah, just a normal good luck charm. Figured if that's it, then sure, I'll take it. I have it with me now. But that wasn't all. Except for- Yeah, no. This- Oh my god, this- oof. Then he told me that he wanted me to look for a talisman Michio Shiraishi had that looked like this one. Huh? Michio? What does she have to do with this? Yoshimi had been meeting up and talking with her. While they were together, he noticed that she had a special talisman or something. But apparently, Michio always avoided the subject. Talisman that Michio had. He knew that he knew that I knew her, so that's why he asked me, he said. Could there have been something about that Michio couldn't even tell couldn't tell even the police about? I know things at home are a little bit complicated. From what I heard, Michio was keeping her mouth shut about Junochi about what Junochi was doing to her. Hard to talk with cops when someone's got dirt on you. And I didn't squeal on anything about Michio either. Michio, what is it that had such a strong grip on you? So basically, Yoshimi didn't have just his eye didn't just have his eyes on Michio, but her talisman too. But after she died, he didn't know where it ended up. So since I knew her from school, he wanted me to look into it for him. Is there something special about the two talismans? I wonder why he gave it to you. Hell if I know. When I looked inside, there was just this weird 
kind of grimy scrap of wood. So you've seen inside it. But from the way he was acting, it seemed important to him somehow. But to be honest, what he was asking is such a pain in the ass, I figured he had to be serious about it. Oh, and since he died right after that. Yeah, he even said to me, if anything happens to me, take those two talismans. Give them to a name they give them to a guy named Nakagoshi at the police department. Knowing what I know, he probably felt that something was gonna happen to him. Hmm? Nakagoshi? Hmm. Do you know him, Mio? No, I've just heard that name, I think. So there really is a Nakagoshi. That's a relief, at least. Anyway, didn't feel right to just ignoring a dead guy's last request. Oh boy, this game is getting more serious by the moment. He told me. Yeah. That talisman? Would you mind if I had a look at it? Sorry, but I don't trust you all that much yet. It's important to me. Oh, okay. So last night you were looking for the talisman Michio had? Yeah. And I figured that piece of garbage teacher would know the most about Michio. I asked him yesterday afternoon if he knew anything about her talisman. He gave me some quick response like, I can talk about it in my co right now. Come to school tonight. He even gave me the lock to the, the code to the lock on the back entrance. He seemed pretty willing to give it out, so I wouldn't be surprised if he used it for secret meetings before. Yuck. I can only imagine. Yeah, my stomach is not doing very well. Ugh. We climbed over the front gate to get in. So, yeah. We met up in the classroom in the middle of the night. But nothing he said made any sense. Like, that I, re that I was really Michio and stuff like that. He went on and on about it. About how it was my fault and that if only I hadn't been around or something. He grabbed a hold of me, breathing heavily. Ugh. W are you okay? Yeah, that's right when you two showed up. I was able to get away while Junochi was freaking out. Oh gosh, good thing you got away. So it's really all thanks to you two that I got away. But I didn't get any information about the talisman, so the whole thing it was sort of a bust. Afterward, I was wondering what you two were up to, so I hid nearby. Then I, saw you, and I, then I saw you and old man Ash, uh, Shimiya talking, and then Mio showed up. Oh, you did? That's also why I saw Junochi come back outside and bite it. I see. So you were only, were only here to look for Michio's talisman. And that's all I know. Happy? Still gotta look for the talisman. Sure. Thank you, Hitami. Oh, and if you two find out anything about Michio's talisman, we'll be sure to let you know. Thanks. Oh, can we get your contact info? Where can we normally find you? Right, I'm not home most of the time. I'm usually at a friend's place. Here's the phone number. Thanks. We'll call her if we need to talk with you. Oh my god, this game is very, very tough. Like, not tough, rough, 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 yeah, rough. And, um, what is it? You're easier to talk than I imagined. I was kind of scared at first, but not anymore. Shut up, you were the one avoiding me. Anyway, catch you later, and don't die out there, okay? Thanks, we'll be careful. Oh my god. Oh my god, this game. Alright then. We got a lot of new information. Sounds like Mr. Junochi was killed by a curse just as we thought. Which means there was a curse bearer at school. Multiple, in fact. Multiple? You think so? Yes, the curse echo we experienced in the school and the one that killed Mr. Junochi seemed to be different. The people in school at the time other than us were Mr. Jinochi, Hitomi, 
an old man Ashimiya who you ran into. I was thinking it would be among them, but there was one more person. Hitomi saw a girl in a school uniform with braids. From what Hitomi was saying, it doesn't even it doesn't seem like she was one. Mr. Junochi was pretty suspicious though. If you were a curse bearer, it would certainly explain why he was killed. Right, that's why I was saying why I say there were are multiple. Alright, the person who killed Mr. Junochi would have to be one too. Which means it must either be the mysterious girl or old man Ashimiya. Yeah, we should really we should certainly be careful to for of them. That said, the mysterious girl and the fact that Mr. Junochi thought it was Michio was, that was attacking him has me wondering. Of course I doubt Michio herself was actually there, but Oh, I just remember I saw I also saw Mr. Araishi outside the main gate last night. You did? It's likely he was involved in the curse given yeah, with the curse gi curses given that he's the one doing research on the right of resurrection. So we'll have to be careful of old man Ashimiya and Mr. Araishi. I want to believe that not all curse bearers will be hostile, but 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 as for what to do now. I like to find who is responsible for the feast of shadows that set off that set this off and how they did it. I don't think we'll be able to end this without stopping it at its source. Hmm. That makes sense. In which case, next we should do what exactly? We need to talk with Mr. Araishi. He definitely knows something. It should be safer during the day, so I think we should try to look for him. Got it. I'll help in any way I can. But the school is closed. I wonder where he could be. Let's try heading someplace, uh, someplace someone may know where he is. Hmm, where to go then? He might go... To... Hmm... Where might he go? Let's, let's try the bridge. And so, Mio Kurosu, eh, Kurosu, eh, Kurosusu and Yako Sakasaki decided on their next location to investigate. And life can be tough. Okay, let's let's read what it says and see what we get. Through the night, Richter continues to gather information about the cursed stones, while Harue lies awake until dawn, preoccupied by the prospect of bringing her lost child back to life. 10 a.m. Tan tan tan! Shim Shigiman Mansion. Good morning, ma'am. How are you feeling? Hmm, I'm fine. I hope we can make good progress today. How's your curse stone looking? I haven't felt anything since sunrise. Interesting. It's possible that its powers can only be unleashed at night, then. That aside, why are you so late this morning? There are unfortunately some things that can't be investigated while the world slumbers. But I did get some research done in what limited time I had. Very well. Let's talk. This is the old mansion where I was born and raised, and I have to stretch. Guys, stretchy stretch stretch. Ay. 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 Okay. Ay. It's kind of getting warm. It's kind of getting warm. And hydrate, we have to stretch and hydrate. Okay, let's stretch and hydrate. Mm. Recently, I've realized one very weird thing, and it's that the ba 
back of my throat is like super dry all the time. So I kind of have to bring that up with a doctor next time I see them. So that's fun. Don't you love having, having medical complications? They are always fun, right? <laughs> having medical mysteries. So much fun all the time. <sighs> anyway, let me tie my hair, even though it won't help much, but it'll make me feel like it helps. <laughs> Okay, there we go. This is the old mansion where I was born and raised. <laughs> nope, not at all. Oh no. The town is beginning to wake up once more. The clamor of society can be heard from beyond the garden gate. My favorite thing about my medical mysteries is when I decide to ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> um... Recently, my... Oh, I need to reset my model. Give me a bit. Recently, my sister was diagnosed with insulin uh, resistance. So, of course, I have to get it checked. But my sister told me a month ago. And guess who hasn't gotten checked? The good thing about where I live and the work I have is that we have very good insurance. And Costa Rica also have the, has the national insurance. So I could get tested through them. Um... But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a very fun thing, you know? Very fun. Actually, can I can I set up a meeting to get my blood drawn by, by La Caja? Iniciar sesión. Um... I don't remember my password has to be one of these passwords What if I do this? No, anyway I'll think about it another day For now, I'm just gonna fan my face because underneath my glasses. I am sweating It's warm <laughs> The town is beginning to wake up once more. The clamor of society can be heard from beyond the garden gates. Like any day, a cloud of pollution drifts from out from the industrial area. Uh, okay, Richter. Let's see what we think about Richter. He's looking a bit tired. Must have put. Must have been up, uh, up all night investigating him. I hate Apple Night. I'd rather it be a pulled an all nighter, but I think that's a more modern way of saying things. So, maybe? We may be surrounded by curses and death, but it matters little. My only concern is whether I can see my child again. By the way, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. And? What's that? Our current plan is to steal cursed stones that's already absorbed by soul dregs, but I'm wondering if it would suffice to not steal, but instead negotiate with a curse bearer and have them use the right for our purpose. Oh? I mean, I suppose that would accomplish the same, but do you think it's possible? So long as we offer compensation, it may prove much easier than you expect. Compensation? Cash, for instance. That wouldn't be off the table for a family as rich as the Shigimas, wouldn't it? Of course. Why, any amount of money- and any amount would be fine if it get the job done. I won't let monetary matters lead me to regrets the way it did back with the ransom. Okay. With that option on the table, let's figure out our strategy. About the curse bearers. Do you have a curse bearer with whom we can negotiate in mind? Not yet. Surprisingly, it seems the other curse bearers haven't been that proactive about collecting soul dregs. Did you see the news this morning? No, I haven't. Overnight, three mysterious deaths were recorded in this area. 
They've yet to announce the identities of the bodies found, but they've been nicknamed the Honjo Serial Killings. It's garnered quite some attention on the streets. Oh my. Only three? That's what I thought. Even the victims were even if the victims were curse bearers, just one or two wouldn't be enough soul dregs. And for what those curse stones are capable of, a mere three victims seems a little on the low side. With this little activity all be all over, all through the night, the curse bearers must be a cautious bunch. What's holding them back? Are we not all after the power of resurrection? There may still be some undiscovered victims, but it doesn't seem like anyone has gathered in enough soul dregs yet. We might have to set up some bait to spur them into action. And then we offer them the deal. None of the curse bearers seem to be very proactive. If there, I wonder if the situation could be what the mastermind who kicked it all off intended. Now that's an interesting theory. You think there's someone behind this all? You mentioned hearing an agonized voice telling you to kill when you first obtained the curse zone. That doesn't sound like a coincidence to me. Someone agitated the curses in this area on purpose, and they are likely after the rite of resurrection as well. So you're thinking the person's not one of the curse bearers? I've got a sharp mind, ma'am. Though it might be, it might seem obvious for the mastermind to become a curse bearer and collect soul dregs, if they were after the right, this would be very risky since it's a, since as a curse bearer, they themselves could become a target. So it'd actually be more convenient for them if the curse bearers moved less aggressively. That's right, but despite that, they've been inciting the curse bearers to commit murders. Why? Let's consider this. What if the mastermind isn't trying to collect soul dregs themselves? You mean their intention was also to steal the, the souls while, while the other curse bearers compete with each other from the start? Sitting back and observing from the sidelines is the safer curse of action. Which is why I figured it'd be best for us to attempt the same strategy. So how do we do it? There's still a reason to suspect the mastermind could be curse, a curse bearer themselves. So someone lets all of them get each other and then they get the last one standing. Yeah. I think... And I think that... Yeah. I don't... <laughs> My brain is fried. There's so much curse going around. <laughs> to be honest, I want to keep my distance from whoever it is. There's no telling what kind of power that might they might possess. Whether our aim is to negotiate or steal, we'll have to outpace the mastermind in making contact with the other curse bearers. How do you suppose we do so? At this point, all we can do is research. But... Okay, so you still say the same thing. If there's a mastermind inciting the curse bearers to collect soul dregs, can we be sure there even is a rite of resurrection? Good question. The rite could be nothing but a myth fabricated to spur the curse bearers into action. Seeing it might be for naught. Do you want to give up, ma'am? Never. Understood. After all, we'll never know the truth unless we see it for ourselves. But we'll do it without using the curses ourselves. By the way, I met a few people who seemed like potential curse bearers last night. I did some investigating into all of them. But I only managed to get detailed information on two. You're quick. I suppose that'd be expected from an investigator extraordinaire. I appreciate the flattery. I love the pose. <laughs> the pose is so funny. First, there's Ayame Tono, the girl we talked to before, though she isn't a curse bearer herself. She's a student attending a, a T University of Art. She currently lives alone in an apartment near Midoricho Park. You even determine her address? You're not one to be underestimated, Mr. Investigator Extraordinaire. 
I called every single university with ukiyo-e in the curriculum pretending to be her parent. I went around to check on her place and the way here. Doesn't seem like she returned home last night. Jojo pose, yeah. <laughs> I'm worried she might have run into some trouble. Didn't you attempt to follow her last night? I'm embarrassed to say, but I couldn't. She shook me off. I couldn't keep track of her. And here I thought you were an investigator extraordinaire. I'd like to learn more about her, but it would take some time. She's planning to, te to steal curse stones, just like us. It's best we act carefully around her. Next is the tall man who was dressed in black. I met him near Kinshicho. He stood out the way uh, with the way he dressed. I managed to get some good information from him. Impressive. What can I say? He works at, uh, as the secretary to Hihaku Soap's chairwoman. I believe his name is Takumi Yumioka. Hihaku Soap's headquarters and the factories are both located in Honjo, correct? Yes, they've been here for a while, but it's only in the past 10 years that the company has shown significant growth. I remember seeing the chairwoman in the news a few years back. She seems very shrewd. With the increase in sales, I, ex I assume she'd want her factories running at full capacity. But with the harsh restrictions against the in industrial waste, a lot of factories with older e equipment had to be shut down. That's right, even 10 years ago, there were many complaints about the chemical plants dumping waste into the river. Most companies back then were more concerned with, the pro with making profit than protecting the environment. Oh boy, is that not true? <laughs> Does that not apply to real life? <laughs> I wonder what ma what man working for such a company would have been up to in the middle of the night. On the way here, I stopped by the company's headquarters, but they hadn't started the day. Should have better luck later. Let's hope you will. Perhaps are interested in seeing the, if the right would, benef would be beneficial for their product research into beauty and skincare. <laughs> now that's an interesting thought. I ran into no game. Don't get real. The game is getting extremely real. I ran into one more suspicious young man last night. This one seemed to be out collecting soul drugs, right? Indeed, I couldn't get a good look at him though, and I couldn't gather enough intel to preferably identify him. Well, that's a shame, but I can make an educated guess. Oh? You know the researcher who discovered the ancient text on the, the Rite of Resurrection? The one who lives near here? His name is Hideki Araishi, and the man I met was very similar in stature. Oh my, even he is involved. How awfully suspect. Considering his background, couldn't he be the one who initiated the whole affair? I think it's possible, yes. Which is why I decided to refrain from making contact with him for the, fir for the time being. Safety first. Understandable. Of course, I want to learn more, but this isn't the right time to focus on him. I prefer to ascertain who else is a curse bearer first. I'll return to Hi Hihaku Soaps to see the man in black. Their headquarters are down on South Warigasui Street. I learned something new about the criminal involved with the kidnapping. It concerns the serial killings. There was a body found at Komagata High School. The person was identified as a school teacher. His name was Kohei Yujonochi. Hmm. Do you think he was a curse bearer? Not sure. It's a possible. It's possible. But regardless, this means the two people who knew the truth about the kidnapping are both dead. Hmm, just when we were getting somewhere. It isn't enough to make to make me give up, of course. Still, we don't know anything about Michio Shidaishi's residence. It'd be wise to pay it a visit. Understood. 
The serial killings! More murder! In addition to the three victims associated with the Honjo serial killings, there's Michio Shiraishi who reportedly committed suicide and the police officer who died at the former Yasuda Gardens. It's if strange deaths continue occurring like so, they're bound to inspire strange rumors. But those last two have nothing to do with the seven mysteries, no? It's true, both occurred a week before this accursed situation began. Still, it can't it cannot be ruled out. It's possible that the mastermind was involved even with those killings. That's what I was thinking. That's what I've been thinking! How? What if there were preliminary steps to awakening the seven mysteries curses? Can we really assume they're unrelated just because the timing doesn't match up? Or rather, the police officer's death is so baffling that it'd be easier if it were connected to these curses. The victim wasn't the type to be caught off guard easily. You seem to know a lot about this. I suppose we weren't strangers. My personal feelings might be wrapped up into in this one too. I see. If you were to investigate this matter more, you may get a lead on the mastermind. You're right. If we wish to focus on the mastermind's identity, this would be a fine starting point. We might even discover more deaths related to the curses on the way. We should pay more attention to today's news. Well, that's all I have to report. Shall we continue with our investigation? What do you want to do? If you still can't use if you still can't use the curse stone, taking a walk should be fine a fine place to start. Right, let's go together. I want to see what's going on for myself. In that case, I'll trust you to decide on where we should go, ma'am. Where should I go to begin my search? Which places have to have stood out to me so far the most so far? Where can we go? Komagata High School, South Warigasui Street, or Midi Midoricho Park? Let's go to Midoricho Park. We're here. This is Midoricho Park. Ayame Tono lives around here. She wasn't in her apartment when I dropped by this morning. I wonder if it's worth checking again. It's always heartwarming to see children playing in the park. Victor seems to like kids, perhaps because they're on the same wavelength? Oh, you called him a child! This place is connected with the story of Tech of Tsugaru. Not only that, Katsushika Hokusai's home was also in this area. That might be why Ayame chose to live here. A small park bordering South Warigasui uh, Street sporting a mixture of cherry and evergreen trees. Although unremarkable in most respects, its small playground always attracts a number of children at calm evening. While no traces remain in the modern day, it's tanned, uh, it stands out that what it once was the site of Tsugaru State. The legendary artist Katsushika Kokusai is also believed to have been born in the vicinity. Seems picking up Ayama's trail is out of the question for now. Why did we even come here? Because maybe there's there's a sticker. We won't get much sun standing around here. Why don't we? Why don't I go out and check out Ayama's apartment? If you don't mean to speak with her, do you don't mean to speak with her, do you? No, I'd prefer to get an idea of what she's been up to. I'd like to see whether she's been home or not, just to potentially get a trace on her movements. Then be my guest. Okay, I shouldn't be long. I'm back, ma'am. So nothing. I'm afraid so. She still hasn't returned. However, however, 
I noticed a few people seem, who seem to be related to the police who are keeping watch in the area. I don't know if they got eyes on her apartment, but they do appear to be watching the building it's in. Interesting. You've got a sharp eye to have noticed them, despite them being so covert. What can I say? It's part of the job. However, it meant I had to refrain from knocking on her door, or looking through her window. I wasn't able to check her electric meter or mailbox either, unfortunately. You were planning to go that far? We wouldn't make much progress sticking around here. What a waste of time, let's move! Sell somebody with the street! Yay, let's go! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! The Hihaku Soap's headquarters are on the other side of South Sarugasui Street. They were close when I visited this morning, but it appears things are up and running now. To think small shop, a uh, small soap making company could grow so much in such a short time. They have factories and warehouses throughout the area now. You can see why director and now chairwoman Natsue Yamamori is called the queen. Chemical producer that ranks 4th largest in the domestic detergent market and 7th largest in the cosmetic market. From its humble beginnings as a small soap factory established after the war in 1946, founder Hatsume Yamamori utilized her feminine perspective and a well-timed economic boom to boldly lead the company into new markets. Even as the market grew crowded with industrial industrialization of Sumida City, the company continued to expand, digging its roots deep into the area. In particular, it established itself as a household name by focusing its brand toward the rapidly expanding convenience store market. Its flagship products now include cosmetics, detergents, soap, shampoo, and more. The company's name, Hihaku, can also refer to katsuri, a type, a katsuri, a type of patterned fabric. Mm. Natsue Yamamori! Finally, after talking about her for so long, we get... the thing. The former president of Hihaku Soaps, a large chemical company. Though she retired from position two years ago, she still wields great influence over the company from her position of chairwoman. Recently, there have been rumors about her possessing strange and powerful magical abilities, earning her the nickname, The Witch of Hihaku. Prior to the war, Natsue enjoyed working uh, her dream job at a textile factory. She was forced to face bitter reality of the world, however, when the factory was destroyed by a fire during the war, and she was ordered to rework the fabric she had painstakingly crafted into something more suitable for a blue collar work. Witnessing the rise of popular in popularity of western style clothing in the post-war period, Natsue left the textile industry. However, a nod to her past can be seen here in her company's name, with Hihaku being another name for Kasuri, a type of fabric featuring patterns and images woven by dyed fibers. Having long been dissatisfied with the soap supplied at the textile factory, Natsue saw a business opportunity and set up her own small soap factory. I need water! <laughs> Natsue saw a business opportunity and set up her own small fa uh, soap factory. Taking inspiration from imported soap brands, she developed new products which quickly gained a good reputation. Ever the shrewd businesswoman, Natsue ran an, aggressively promotional, an aggressive promotional campaign on TV featuring popular Japanese singer, rapidly turning Hihaku Soaps into a household name. You mentioned that Takumi works as her secretary? That's correct. Do you think it's possible he's acting on her orders? That's exactly my thinking. A curse bearer with both money and power could certainly look at resurrection as their next price. Negotiating with a person of that stature may prove difficult. Business is up and running. I can see people inside the reception area. Okay. Back in the Edo period, the canal known as South Warugasui ran through this area, but it's been turned into a major road. 
It's a bit o it's a bit away from Kinshicho Station or Ryogoku Station, though it's still considered an ace area. The stories of the ever burning lantern and the food washing mansion both took place around here. One of the bodies discovered this morning was also found by this road as well. This is quite a lively area, huh? I suppose you could call it somewhat of a city center. A. Warigesui, li uh, literally partitioning ditch, refers to a waterway dug down the middle of a road uh, so as to divide it. The dawn of the Edo period, the Hunja district was a little more than a collection of suburban rice farms. As the area became more developed, the South Warigesui was ex excavated in order to drain water, rainwater into the Yokoji, uh, Yokojiken River to the east. Though it served the people long and faithfully, it was converted into an underground culvert at the beginning of the Showa era. In the present, no trace of, re of it remains on the surface, but the street that bears its name. Oh boy. So an influential person of at Hihaku Soaps could be a potential curse bearer. Richter proposed we use money to negotiate for curse for the curse stones, but we could hardly outbid a large corporation if it came down to it. He tells me he barely slept last night, and yet, he, and yet he seems to be brimming with energy. Was I too that resilient at his age? Perhaps it's what sets the apart a detective from the rest. First, I need to confirm whether Takumi is the man I ran into last night. Then I'll be able to determine if he's a curse bearer. It'll be better if I go inside the headquarters alone. You should walk around, visit a cafe or some tea, perhaps. For some tea, perhaps. Uh, okay, I think. Uh, okay. I'm going in. I may be a while, so feel f uh, so feel to find somewhere to kill time. So feel free. Oh my God, they skipped the word free. Okay, good luck in there. Sorry to keep you waiting. How did it go? I'll fast forward to the conclusion. Am I met with Takumi. There's no doubt he's the same man I saw last night, but it doesn't seem like he's a curse bearer. Hmm. But that doesn't mean he has no connections to the recent curses. He knew about the seven mysteries. He even guessed we have a curse of our own. Excuse me? I tried to approach the Kumi about a fallen item after I ran into him last night. However, you said your name was Richter, correct? I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. I'm hoping you would hand over the cursed stone in your possession. Cursed stone? What are you on about? There's no need to play dumb with me. In fact, there's no time for it. I had all the same reason you did to think you were a curse bearer last night. And your arrival here only confirms it. You are a curse bearer, no? You're right. We lack time. I'll confess. I am a curse bearer. I possess the curse stone of the hunting clappers. I'm glad to hear the truth. Finally, this conversation is worthwhile. I fucking hate you, this guy. It's a dangerous item you hold. Give it to me. My company will take responsibility to dispose of it. I didn't know the soap business specialized in scrubbing curses clean. It's a prerogative of Miss Yamamori. Is that so? Assuming you've obtained the curse, you, have, you understand the power it involves, no? Miss Yamamori possesses supernatural powers akin to those of a god. Okay. She also has deep love for this land. Having transformed it from the pile of dirt it once, it once was to the home of our headquarters. She cannot stomach the fact that it is now the site of this curse's run rampant. So you're telling me the queen of Hihaku is a real life witch. She wouldn't appreciate being called that, mind you. The sorcerer by the name of Swigen Gamiodo, who's gallantly working behind the scenes, exercising spirits and the like. Go on. That being so, 
there have been there already there have already been instances of the dead coming back to life. Do you understand the urgency of this matter? These are curses we're speaking of, tools which are used by wicked beings to possess people. The rite of resurrection is nothing but a fabrication meant to seduce the curse bearers into unspeakable action. If you truly understand what I'm talking about, you must hand over your, that curse stone at once. Very interesting. With that said, just how many curse stones have you acquired so far? If what you tell me is true, surely the company would have launched a large-scale research by now. We have six. Boy, I don't think so. Boy, I don't think so. Six. Whoa, I can rest at ease then. And here I thought I was at risk of being cursed. Seems we're on the same page. If that's the case, you should hand over your curse stone immediately. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it's not actually in my possession at the moment. Considering its importance, I've been keeping it hiding. Really now? Then I'll accompany you while you retrieve it. I'm sorry, but I've got something important to attend to. But I promise I'll return it with uh, I'll return with it later. Oh, he is a hundred percent bluffing. Both of them, both of them are a hundred percent bluffing. Very well. Then you won't refuse to provide your address and telephone number, I presume. How prudent of you. I'll oblige. And that's how it went. So they, are, they aren't after the right after all. I wouldn't be so quick to trust him. Yeah! Oh? I believe we're dealing with a master in deception. He may well have made up a story to convince us to part with the, uh, uh, part ways with our stone. I think he was lying about having procured six stones like that as well. Like, really? Six? That's excessive. Well, now I feel gullible. The company's flooding something. I wonder what they mean to do with the cursed stones. He seemed rather desperate to get a hold of ours, despite us not having collected any soul dregs. Perhaps the people of Hihaku are the masterminds behind the curses being unleashed. Because the charm woman's a witch? I wonder about that too. If she really were that powerful, would her secretary have divulged that information so casually? Takumi was either making it up as he went, or... Or? Or he's trying to spread a rumor. For what purpose would he do that? Recently, people have been caught up about the occult more than ever before. If you spread, if word spreads that a Hihaku's chairwoman has godlike powers, she could very well benefit socially and politically from that mystique. Hmm. That's unsettling. We should avoid Hihaku for the time being. It'll, pay, it'll be a pain if I have to deal with Takumi again. By the way, there's one more thing of interest I heard while in the company's reception lobby. And what's that? People were discussing whether one of the bodies found this morning was that of a Hihaku employee. Really? So long as the officials haven't revealed the identity, it all amounts to no more than speculations, though. Despite that, I have reason to believe Hihaku Soaps is deeply involved with the Seven Mysteries. And the very and at the very least, I can assure you, I've gathered that much. The more we know, the better our negotiations will go. How interesting that the Queen of Heihaku, or the Witch, whatever it is, whatever she is, is trying to get her hands on the Rite of Resurrection. It's like some dark fairy tale. Regardless of what it is, of what is or isn't true, we must stay one step ahead. Okay, oh my god, I think we're going to save here because let me tell you, my throat is absolutely killing me. 
I better get it checked out. But of course, as most of you know, it's uh, Easter this week. And as some of you know, Costa Rica is a very Catholic country. So doctors are not available at this, at this moment in time. So I'll have to figure it out next time. Tan tan tan. Um, let's see. Let's see who we can raid. First of all, we are raiding with conspiracy theories. <laughs> because I love conspiracy theories. Then, let's see who who is live. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Um, let's see who's live. Apparently the Super Mario Bros. movie is good. <laughs> That's good. Um... Let's see, let's see who's live. Who's live? There are a lot of people live right now. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What are you playing? Tabletop simulator. If your throat hurts, drink some water. I've been drinking water all along, but it's still. Ugh. It's like very uncomfortable. Mmm. Oh, it's his birthday. You know what? You know what? Let's raid some Xeno Papa. Raid Xeno Penumbra. Uh, it's his birthday, so also say happy birthday. But we are going to raid with conspiracy theories. Thank you guys so very much for stopping by today. As always, I highly appreciate you stopping by. It's a lot of fun. Um, what else? I guess I guess that's it. I guess th that's really it. Thank you so very much. I had a blast today with all the weird talks that we were <laughs> that we had. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow for more of this game. I guess. For more spoopiness, hopefully. But definitely death and destruction. <laughs> Bye, everyone.